tonight, uh, so everybody will be recognized um, for those things. So a lot of people here and another perfect night for football. Yeah, great night for football. Uh, we'll just introduce ourselves. I'm, I'm Brandon Allman along with David Garrison. So, yeah, definitely a, a packed house. Uh, all kinds of cheerleaders, pink pom-poms everywhere. And then I know at, I think what at halftime or right before halftime, at, the, at halftime, at halftime the 56ers, mm -hmm. the fifth and sixth grade youth program here uh, will also be recognized. So a great crowd. Um, once again, please tune in. Please, please make sure that you you hit the subscribe button to be notified when we're live again. Once again, it is free to subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, if you'd like to to join as a member, please feel free to to do that. You can hit the hit the join to to help support us. Um, and if you if you'd like to sponsor, please make sure that you reach out to myself or David or AWH Media, um, and you know we would love to to get you on our screen. Uh, we can't thank our sponsors enough. It's because of them that we're able to do this, provide a free a free broadcast for everybody at home and everybody watching across you know hopefully the country. Um, so please make sure that you you support them because of their support for us. Right, and just a reminder of the chat, if you guys have any chats, uh, we'll do our best to, to respond to those as, as we can. Yeah, um, tell us where you're watching from. Tell us if you got any, any game updates across, the, across the, the state, please make sure to feel free to share those. And once again, please chat. We, we love to intera interact um, as much as we can. So yeah, Brandon, back to the back to the, the matchup here tonight. Uh, like you said, Brownstown three and zero. Um, uh, Salem with a new coach. I know they're they're off to an zero and three start, but um, they put some points up on the board. I think when when they line up tonight, you will recognize their formation. Uh, they'll look a lot like uh, the Braves do. So they they put their slots in motion a little differently and run a few things. Um, a few things a little differently uh, than what we do. Their fullback is 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 back. Their, their quarterback will take some snaps under center. So um, I know Coach Gleason. Um, he he's well traveled. Um, I think this is his probably six, seven starts or stop somewhere along the way. Um, loves to run the football. I, I do know that every every place he's been, he's been a a run dominant football team. Yep, and that's a, and and they show that on film too. Um, a lot of runs, they will throw some halfback passes, some trickery uh, uh, stuff in there. So on the back end, we will need to be playing pass. And, and it reminds me at the collegiate level of, of Navy a lot, or, or even ourselves um, in the mirror uh, here at Brownstown and, and how we like to do things. But uh, a lot of runs. Yeah, I mean, coming in 0-3, I would expect that, you know, this is this is they, they, get, they feel like they have nothing to lose. So I would definitely expect to see some of that. And. You know, I know just Salem is always a tough, full of a, a team full of tough, hard-nosed boys. Um, so I, I don't think I don't expect them to come in and lay down whatsoever against us. Oh no, they they like you said they have nothing to lose. Um, if they can pull out an upset and, and spoil the conference for somebody, you know they'll they'll look to do that. So um, no pressure really for them. They're just trying to build a program and, and get back to. Um, I think what 2019 was the last time. Maybe they, they beat us or uh, I believe that's I believe you're right. 2019, so. I think. Um, you know, really tough game last year. Uh, I think we we won by it was a a score or something like that. Really tough, hard nosed game. Yeah, we ended um, up pulling away, pulling away uh, a little bit toward the end of the game, but yeah, it started off pretty tough. Please remain. Yeah, 20, 26 to 26 to 12. So I knew it was a, a pretty close ball game, a competitive ball game. Um, and hopefully we get to see one of those tonight. I mean, yep. I, I'd like to see a, a really good competitive game. I think the Brownstown needs needs a few more of those as well. So they get do. them prepared they for the, the sectional. That sectional is tough. We have two top ten teams ranked, uh, or two uh, top ten teams um, in, in our sectional, and and uh, <laughs> you know sometimes it's luck of the draw. You'd hope to only maybe <laughs> have to play one of those, but uh, for sure. But you got to beat the best to to get there anyway. So. You take whatever draw you get, but um, yeah, it's going to be a tough sectional. We also know uh, there's a big game tonight. Uh, looking at, at conference at North Harrison and Charleston play tonight, so North Harrison wins that. We got a big game here next week uh, for probably who, who takes conference rights. Um, so, so we look forward to that. Yeah, I definitely didn't want to get ahead of myself right there, but you, you brought in my, in the right, my next point, talking about you know, talk, sometimes as coaches we talk about trap games. 
Um, and if North Harrison looking ahead, we play them next week. So we overlook Salem a little bit, and, you, you know, yep. they come up and bite us. We definitely don't want that to happen. And exactly. Don't expect that. I definitely don't expect that of a Coach May, Coach football team. I mean, he, he he's going to have his guys locked in. He takes every game once one game at a time. So Right. And both of us playing playing under him in the, in the past, <laughs> we, we know that uh, – He's fully aware when we might be getting full of ourselves a little bit. So, you know, he, he uh, tightens down a little bit more typically in, in the weeks where we're uh, projected or, or we think we're supposed to win. So uh, trying to keep that the intensity all season. Okay. Well, we are going to take a quick break here, um, play, play one of our commercials for our sponsors. So please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Acquired by Damon Bailey and Randy Hawkins in 2011, Resource Services is your one-stop shop for anything from janitorial to food service supplies. Resource Services specializes in K-12 education. We are the preferred vendor for the Indiana-approved shopping cooperative. We offer name brands with competitive pricing. Our staff is trained to help solve your issues and help save you money. We are located in Bedford, Indiana and service the entire state of Indiana, Kentucky, Southern Illinois, and parts of Tennessee. Give us a call today at 812-275-4790. Founded in 1970, Brownstown Electric Supply Company is proud to serve and provide material to our friends in the utility industry. We are equipped to take on the most demanding projects with an experienced staff located in Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, and Illinois. Brownstown Electric is family owned and operated with a family first work culture. If you're looking for a lasting career in a robust industry, give us a call today at 812-358-4555 or visit us online at brownstown.com slash careers. NITEC strives to make technology easy. We pride ourselves in being your technology partner. NITEC is an established networking infrastructure company located in Southern Indiana. As a premier choice for fiber optic cabling installation and network administration, NITEC is a staple in the community for technology related needs. We take pride in providing the best customer experience as well as thoroughly completing highly satisfactory work. In our area, there is a great need for affordable information technology services and we feel we can offer just that. Visit us today at NITEC.com. Finding the right insurance coverage can be a daunting task. But fear not, because here at Brown Family Insurance, we've got your back. With years of experience and a dedication to our community, we're your trusted local independent agency, including companies such as Erie Insurance, Western Reserve Group, and Progressive. From auto, home, business, and life, we're here to tailor the perfect insurance solution just for you. Because protecting what matters most is not just a job for us, it's our passion. Contact our staff today and let's secure your future together. All right, we are back here live once again. B-Town Live presented by AWH Media. Um, I just thought, Dave, we, we could hit on some of our, our fall sports teams that, you know, that don't necessarily get enough recognition. Um, and I, I'd like Perfect. to start with our, our cr girls and boys cross-country teams. Um, both, I think, are having stellar seasons. Our, our girls – Cross country team currently, I think, sits at 33 and 19, um, and the boys cross country team currently at 35 and six, I believe. Uh, I know they have a big, a big uh, invitational at Brown County. And I was talking to Coach Cook, uh, the girls' coach, just a little bit ago, um, and he said it's a, a really big tournament or a really big invite for them. I know the boys' team; uh, they're led by the Ratliff twins, Chance and Shane Ratliff, and the the girls cross-country team is led by Campbell Shastine and, and Kelsey Snyder. So it's good, really nice to see them having, you know, both of them having really good seasons. And, and really, uh, just to throw a little bit in, I mean, every night, every, every morning when I come in uh, to drop one off for a film, they're out there running. So uh, they're, that's good to see the hard work paying off. They, and they are, they are definitely, definitely, uh, you know they are they Put, all putting in the time all season long. I mean, even in the summer they're running early in the morning. So once again, really great scene here watching the Braves run on the field. Really cool to watch the the pile on here. I, I didn't see any uh, 56er 
kids <laughs> tripping and getting ran over. So that's, <laughs> that's good. They'll all be available tomorrow morning. Uh, and you know that's going through some of their minds. Oh, that's yeah. like, oh, man, oh, yeah. I don't want to fall right out in front of all these guys. But <laughs> this, this here, of course, is a tradition that dates back as long as I can remember. Yep. Um, our playing days, of course, and even before that. So. Why the why the the pylons going on here onto the the tennis team? Um, they are they're catching fire here at the right time. I think they've won three in a row now. Um, they had a pretty busy week this week. Uh, they they traveled uh, to Bedford last night, got a win. I think they won four to one last night. It was really nice. Uh, our girls golf team go to Jiffy Treat after we played Otis Park, and we happened to meet the boys team since they played BNL there yesterday. So um, and then they they also had a big conference win this week against Corden Central. So. Um, I think their record now is five and five. Once again, I think they've won three in a row, something like that. So, really, really good. Coach Thomas has those guys playing well, and I think uh, Pearson Wheeler at our number two. I think he's still undefeated on the season, nine um, zero somewhere around in there. So that's good to hear. Good to hear. We got the national anthem coming up. Yep. I don't think we can quite. Yeah, we can't quite quite get quite there. So. Great job by Mr. Schaefer and our and the BCHS band of the Braves. A um, couple more, I know our volleyball team took a took a tough conference loss last night to Silver Creek. I uh, believe they they won the the first game and then lost three straight. So I know a little bit about Silver Creek. I know, I mean, just the fact that I know they're huge. They, yeah. um, they have a six four girl who's already committed to Louisville, and I know that they have a six three girl Brooklyn Wren, really really good basketball player as well, but. You know, it's never easy to go get 6-4 and 6-3. No. Um, the just line, their, their presence at the net. Um, but, you know, our, our, our girls, uh, the varsity stands at 8-7. and seven. Um, You know, it just those record is oh, – that record's always deceiving. Our, our girls' volleyball program, Coach Shade, uh, they play one of the toughest schedules in the state year in, year out. Um, and, you know, that just bodes well for them in the postseason. And it, it showed throughout her – her tenure here at Brownstown with the amount of sectional championships she's won, regional championships, and of course a, a state title back in 2019. Yeah, they don't they don't back away from a challenge, and that's something you like to see. And and uh, you know it it reminds me of uh, uh, Michigan State thinking of, of of college basketball. You know they they play a tough schedule early and come tournament time, um, they're they're running uh, on all cylinders and and looking to make a deep run into the sectional. And, and I, I I could be wrong. I mean. I, but I feel like we're still a relatively young young team. I know there's a lot of um, sophomores, a few freshmen, and, and, and junior, mostly junior-led. There are some seniors on there, so I don't want to dismiss them. But uh, 
when you when you are having a, a lot of sophomores, regardless of what sport it is, it's it's um, it's hard to. Yeah, and, and the really awesome thing is, like a lot of them played last year. Yeah. So yeah. there's, I mean, building. Granted, they're still young, but yeah, building and just gaining confidence each, each and every game. And you know, I know they have deep, they have deep aspirations to make a deep run in the, in the tournament. High aspirations, I should probably say, but to make a deep run this year. So, um, look forward to seeing what they do the rest of the season. A little coin flip, Dave, did you see? I, I happened to miss it <laughs> while we were talking, but uh, I guess we'll find out here shortly. Yeah, we'll definitely find out. It looks that. like uh, we might be kicking off, so we'll, we'll get the ball second half. Yeah, we, we, we did. We deferred to the to the second half, so Salem will receive the kick. Um, and Abrazel, will, you know, I, I think that, you know, the, the games that I've seen, Dave, I've well, been able to, to watch most of them now. We are led defensively. As a whole, I, I think our defense has really set the tone. I mean, our offense is, is superb. I, I'm not taking anything away from our offense, but I just think that our defense has really set the tone. Yeah, our, our defense, I mean, defense always travels. Our defense, I would agree. I mean, it's been, it's been, um, it's been playing well uh, to start. I do think uh, the offense is, is picking up each game and uh, something you kind of expect. Uh, Sometimes the offense it, it does take a few few games to click and get the offensive lineman uh, gelling, and I think uh, we'll we'll see tonight. Hopefully, we, we can continue with both uh, defense and offense uh, picking up where they left off last week. Yeah, and I think that's that's expected. You know, we're talking about our volleyball being a young team. Our football team is, is a really young team here. You know, led by a sophomore quarterback and and led on the offensive end right now by you know their sophomore Preston Garrison. Um, Good boot there by, by Bryce Peak. Ooh. Nice tackle. And you know, great great coverage. I remember going back to, to game one, that was one of the areas that we said that we need to focus on was was our kickoff, you know, team, coverage team, and nice job there by the Braves. Yep. Looks like the Lions will be starting at the at the twenty five here. Um, like to say hi to James McFarland. He, I know he's he's watching here and and uh, BC Brave 21 checking in from Las Vegas. After this, going to watch Liberty, um, the number two team, play. So that's really really cool. I'm gonna guess it's pretty nice and hot in Las Vegas. Yeah, looks I missed the, the some of the play, but uh, looks like Gregory Hudson made a good tackle and and we uh, Braves tackled Salem for a loss of two here. tackle here and the Salem's got a nice run along the right side near the first down marker we'll see where they spot it yeah like you said earlier very very similar to Brownstown really tight formation slots in motion um, yep yeah so, uh, those <laughs> last week's game wasn't on air but Pekin was absolutely huge uh, I think they had a couple of six eight boys and and well over 300 pounds obviously and and their back was 229 and and um, 62, so Salem not quite that big, but uh, the pass here. Oh. oh, complete there for first down, I believe, right? Um, oh, close, maybe close. A, a two yard short, yards. maybe. Close pass, so nice slant route there, ran by by Salem. Pick up uh, eight. I like that strategy. Come out, you know, your run, run, run team, and and try to try to get a few passes early, and um, just switch it up. Try to catch them off, catch the Rays off guard. Fullback dive. Hand off to the fullback there. Yeah, full, first down, I believe. Yep, picked it up. So Salem moving the ball here on the first drive. Um. And, you know, even if they don't end up scoring um you know just getting getting a little confidence getting the first down trying to trying to control the field position game would be huge for them yep and, and again watching film and uh during the week they there are a team that starts off well 
Uh, they started off well in, in, in every game that they've played. So um, we'll see if they can just sustain it. Oh, missed tackle. Missed tackle. And another big game for the Lions. Um, a pass out to the flat route. I think it's a running back or fullback uh, flat. Chased down by 66 Roberts from behind there. So it's good hustle by a defensive lineman. Look at a little quarterback scramble there. A little just sprint a, out. Like a sprint out. Yep. Just getting the ball out quick. Prevent the rush from getting to him. And yeah, and I know that's where some of the Braves have had success. I, I know we've got several tackles for loss and been able to pressure quarterbacks. And so, once again, trying to keep us on our toes. And toss there for. Toss to the right, gain a two maybe. See if the Braves can settle down, trying to get a handle on the offense that the Lions are running. Still always really cool to, I know you can't see it on, on film, but you can see part of it here, the, all the, the young cheerleaders out here, you know, cheering with the high school cheerleaders. So, you know, we always talk about football guys, basketball players, um, your big sports. It was a nice, nice run there by 27 for the, for the Lions. Yeah, uh, Braves just getting sucked in and no outside contained. So, I, I, we'll see, uh, be interesting to see what kind of a, adjustments we make or if it's I'm sure the the plan is there it's just a matter of seeing who's not executing I'm sure I agree Coach may yep. will let them know but back to the the cheerleaders uh you know just role models those young girls see those girls out there cheering and and want to be just like them so it's really cool to see all the all them out there yep there's several and <laughs> you, you, you think that's that means a lot of participation in the future Nice Another, coverage there very by nice. Engel. Yeah, very nice coverage broken up there by Engel. Another quick slant. Same thing, quick three. Uh, I think it looked like a three-step drop there. Yep. Just quick, get it out quick, and but great coverage. <laughs> I think Engel wanted to make sure he got the – Got the recognition there oh, after, after that. Yeah, he, oh, wait, uh, yeah. he uh, <laughs> gave a little flex there. I think to, it's like, hey, that was that was me, not Chick T. Meyer there. So <laughs> we got it right here, though, Dave. Dave on top of it. Another, Another sprint, sprint out. out. Oh, they got. Oh, he's got a guy too. Yep. Anderson. Great nice. play. Preston Garrison, I believe, is the one who got his hand on that, yeah, tipped it up. Left his guy, got the tip, and Chick Tmeyer right there to, to to clean it up. And actually great concentration there by Chick after it after it went up, it hit his hands and then popped out again. And as he's coming down, he uh, he maintained it. So yeah, and a touch back there time. for the for the Braves after the interception. And you know, Braves, I think, got lucky there. The kid was open there, and it's just a little late throw. And yep. but but Garrison made a great job. Preston made a great job of, of you know, redirecting, coming off his guy, getting a fingertip on it, breaking it up, and great concentration by Chick T. Meyer to bring that in. See if the Braves can capitalize. Like maybe a screen a little inside here. screen here. Fullback screen here up the middle. Looked like a lot of uh, grass there, Brandon, but yeah. but it closed quickly as Salem pursued really well. I agree. I was thinking that was going to be a, a really large play there. I didn't see any any white jerseys in the area. It did clo close very quickly. Like a gain of seven. Still great though. If you can second three, keep those manageable situations. You know, you know, first down, you just get a good chunk of yards. It makes makes the offense opens up the playbook a lot as well. Right. Looks like we got some flags here, maybe a false start. Push the Braves back to uh, second nine. Well, Dave, not to this Dave and I's first time doing this on our own. Yeah. Second time, yeah. second time, but we're on our own, and 
First flag of the game, I actually got lucky there and made sure I remembered to hit the flag button so you all could see that out there. So, <laughs> Yeah, may have to bear with us a little bit <laughs> yeah, on <laughs> getting everything up, <laughs> up as quickly as, as we need to. But. Sun moves back to about second and eight here, I think, so. Nice run by Engel. Great cutback by Engel. He gets out across the 50 to about the 40. Oh, no, they're marking him, marking him out just before the 50 at about the yep. 40, 49, 48. But great cutback there. Yeah, uh, it was a great cutback. Looked like it was intended to go off the right tackle somewhere around that area and makes a cutback all the way to the left side of the field for a big game. So really nice, really nice recovery there after that, that penalty there. And direct snap to the fullback, gain of six. It's good to see Engel healthy. I know uh, the game he he was hobbled uh, the Corden game a little bit, and Charlestown you could tell defensively he was. He was limping around quite a bit on that knee, so looks like yeah. he's back. And I don't remember him playing a snap defensively. I, I could, and uh, I he, may he be did mistaken, not play but a snap offensively, Charlestown or the uh, game last week. So, so just very, defense. very good. Uh, yes, I had that switched around, but definitely nice to see him back. Because uh, if I'm not mistaken, we we had him as our player of the game there, yep. that first game. I thought he had a really nice game, um, but yeah, definitely need our guys healthy. That you know nothing. Nothing harder on a on a team, and I know that was really hard on the Braves last year. They were really injury prone last year. Yep. Um, so we just like to see, definitely like to see guys stay healthy and be able to complete a full season. So the Braves got a first down here. Brass Junkie here. Let's go Salem. Glad you're watching, Brass Junkie. Oh, looks like a pass here to Hudson Fritz. He is in for the score. Touchdown nice Braves. Sheffer and nice route by Hudson Fritz as he faked the comeback and, and went vertical in the corner bit and uh, nice throw and catch. I think on Madden we used to call that the hitch and go. Yep. Um, great, great, great Fake by pass fake by Sheffer, great route by Fritz, um, and able to, to connect for six. <laughs> Bryce Peak on to kick. Grant Killy, the holder. Yeah, Peak. He uh, puts it through and Braves are up 7 0. Uh, Peak, I was mentioning him last week, 6 for 6 on field goal attempt. So he had a good good week last week. Yeah, as well. huge huge for the Braves to, to do that. I know that was a killer a couple years ago or a few years ago when we had it go for two, and you're always playing from behind. So it's, it's yeah. nice to have a guy you can throw out there confidence in to, to uh, put something through the board. You think it's just a point, but when you. When you go twice and can't convert a two-point conversion, now all of a sudden it's it's 12 to 14. That you're, you're just constantly playing ch catch up from there. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure on the offense to convert all the all yeah. the your your remaining two-point conversions. Yeah, exactly. Up, so. so big, big, big possession, big turnover um, for the Braves. You know, Salem driving. Really easily, actually. I mean, I did yeah, a break. Brown side didn't put up much of a fight and get, get a nice tip into tip a turnover and, and made a pay on the opposite side, you know, being able to put up seven on our first possession. Again by Peak, down to about the 10. Nice tackle there by Chick Timor. 
Decent return, though. Um, Braves were a little, a little slower getting down there on that, on that coverage, it looks like. Gained about 17 on the return. Let's see. Hopefully the Braves can put up a little bit more resistance this this series here. Oh, quarterback down. I think he just decided to avoid the the pressure and and, and drop. But Grant Kelly there for the uh, Grant Kelly was there, and it looks like maybe Trent Lowry. And yeah, that was that was more of a we we seen a quick you know the sprint outs. Three step drops. I think that was a, more of a five to seven step drop there. Yeah. Um, they, I think they had a go route R on R the end here. Yep. And a, and the pressure able to able to to make him go or take him down there. Second eighteen for the Lions. Quarterback keeper on the right side there. Brought down after a gain of six maybe. And when you're run dominated, like five, yeah. run dominated, you know, offense. These are the these are the down distance you don't want to get into. Third and long, you know, never want to be third and long actually, but even more difficult when you're, you know, you're predicated by the run. Yeah, when a team knows you have to pass, it makes it a little bit more, uh, a little easier to to defend. We have a reverse here, picked up very easily by Joe Roberts in the backfield, almost there to intercept the. The double handoff. Looks like the Lions are on to punt. We got Chick Tmeyer on to receive. Really short kick there. Takes a sail on the Lions bounce though. Yeah. Ends up being a good punt with the roll and. Braves will take over at the 35. So definitely a tell two series so far defensively for the Braves. You know, not very good, just blatantly honest there, you know, until that interception there in the end zone. And then, you know, we, we take them for a eight, eight yard loss that, that series. So I'd like to definitely see more of that. Yeah, this is a new, like we mentioned pregame, this is a new offense. Uh, that Salem is running, so it's uh, you know it's not something the Braves are, are familiar with, or any team that's that's seen them yet this year. So may take some adjustments. Nice run there by Preston Garrison. Nice nice initial hole. I thought line gave yep. a nice initial yep. hole, and then he made a a cut. Um, you know, I saw a picture there. Uh, I believe it was from the Charlestown game, I think. Um, him making a, a really sharp cut reminded me um, of somebody else I know and, and used to get a watch play. So I'd say he gets it honestly. <laughs> yeah, the Braves back so far. Nice run there by Gregory Hutchison. The uh, Braves back so far are just... They're not getting touched until they're, you know, 12 yards up upfield and uh, makes life a little easier for the backs. I think the offensive line, uh, we uh, we didn't maybe fail to mention the Corden game, but they, they do a great job and continuing to just improve, I think, as the year goes on. Left tackle, um, I'll try to name them off as we, as the play occurs. Left tackle is uh, Trent Lowry. Um, left guard is maybe Jaden Disk. Center is Drew Shelton. Um, Carson Darledge is the right guard. And Cash Zumix is the right 
right tackle. And then we, we play a lot with tight end too, which his primary responsibility in our offense is to block <laughs> as well. And that's, that's Grayson Cassidy. Quarterback keeper here by Sheffer. Looks like he got enough for the first down. So it'll be first and goal Braves at the five. And I will apologize if there's a paid route uh, yeah. or a corner route here, if they, the Braves, we, we can't quite see the, the right corner of the end zone here, um, but we will for sure let you know if, if we get in that corner. Direct snap to the fullback, Jack Pace. I don't see any signal no yet. Signal Looks yet. like maybe a yard short, maybe. Let's see if the Braves decide to do the exact same thing here to punch it in. Quarterback keeper, keeper, yep, there. And Sheffer walks Sheffer walks into, into the yeah. walks into the end zone for, <laughs> for the Braves for six. And Bryce Peak quickly back on for another extra point. Kicks up. And good. And good. Your Braves take a 14-0 lead here early in the fourth or first quarter. Once again, up in the right-hand corner um, of, our, of your screen there, you should see our sponsors rotating through. Um, once again, we cannot thank them enough uh, because of their, their sponsorships, their donations, that we're able to bring this free broadcast. Um, I know across the state there are a lot of places that, that charge, um, but fortunately for, for Brownstown, um, because of their, their, their donors, um, we're able to pr bring this – live to you. Ooh, nice hit there. Nice hit. Gregory Hutchinson. I believe, I mean, looked like he stood him straight up from yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely a lot easier when, when you're watching live and I'm sitting here trying to watch the screen to make sure the camera's <laughs> where it needs to be. Um, so it, it's a little delayed for me to, to know exactly what's happened. So it's the first time that I've moved the camera. So once again, I'll take all the blame uh, if I miss anything or get behind. Toss off to the right side there. Gain of five. Looks like there might be a certain formation they say them if I mean right now when when they run to that uh, the opposite side of the receiver they've, they've been picking up yardage we'll see if they stick to that
that that that motion decoy motion there definitely didn't, didn't help, did not yeah. have any effect on on our Braves defense. A little misdirection, send one guy this way, toss back the other way, and I mean he was met immediately in the backfield. Yep, no gain looks like. No gain. Yeah, no gain. Third and third and four. Third and four looks like maybe a that's a long four if it is. <laughs> <laughs> Big play here for the for the Lions. Another drop back, throws an absolute duck, um, but, but I believe it's for, reeled uh, in for first down. Yeah, yeah, reeled in by number eight there. Um, I don't have all the the Salem guys in front of me, but great play there by number eight Braxton Dean. Had a, definitely a common name there in Washington County. I, I know there's a bunch of Deans and have some famous ones there throughout <laughs> the years. Well, a minute to go, under a minute to go here in the first quarter. The Braves 14 to 0, outside toss for the Lions. Nice. Another nice game, Dave. I think that's kind of what you're talking about. Yeah. They, they that, that time it was to the receiver side, side, but it seems like the toss play, they're, they're able to get outside the Braves and and um, walling off our outside backer pretty, pretty good, it looks like. It's more of a, a, a straight back toss designed to go behind the guards there, so not outside, designed to go outside, but the uh, Nice, hit. nice little cut, though. I think the Braves were there in the backfield, and Kid made just one nice little cut, made one guy miss, um, and was able to, to, I think, get what a gain of maybe a yard or two there or something like that. Just got the mo got all he could. Yeah. yeah. And I believe the the, the Lions are. Up here. I think the minutes. Lions are going to let the clock run out here, and that's going to be the end of the the first quarter uh, with your Brownstown Central Braves leading fourteen to zero. And we will be right back. Finding the right insurance coverage can be a daunting task. But fear not, because here at Brown Family Insurance, we've got your back. With years of experience and a dedication to our community, we're your trusted local independent agency, including companies such as Erie Insurance, Western Reserve Group, and Progressive. From auto, home, business, and life, we're here to tailor the perfect insurance solution just for you. Because protecting what matters most is not just a job for us, it's our passion. Contact our staff today and let's secure your future together. And we are back here getting ready to start the second quarter as, as the, the Braves lead 14-0 over the Salem Lions. We'll switch directions here. Um, uh, was I gonna, lost my train of thought there for a second. Uh, I know we didn't get through everybody earlier. Um, uh, I know the the girls golf team, uh, which I have the the great pleasure of being able to to coach. Uh, I have a great group of girls. We only have five of them, um, but we, we're having a great season. We're currently thirty and five. Um, our five losses, you know, have been to to been to really really good golf programs. Um, Center Grove, I think they're ranked second or third in the state. Bedford's ranked in the top fifteen in the state. Uh, lost to East Central, New Albany, and Bloomington South. So. Uh, we've had some really good, good uh, scores throughout the season. Um, we're led by Gracie Reynolds. Her average is down in the low 40s right now, so she's come a long way in three years. Um, and we we go to Shadowwood tomorrow for our MSC conference tournament, and then you know our season goes real <laughs> by real quick. We we uh, have sectional already next week. So oh, wow. yeah. Well, one thing I know is I, I don't, won't pretend I know anything about golf, but I didn't hear any small schools mentioned in, in those, out of those schools that you said you'd gotten beat by. So, yeah. something to be said for that. Decision here for the Lions. Fourth and three, down 14 to zero right here, right near midfield. Um, Looks like as of now, they're going to think about going for it. We'll see 
I said four. I think I said four three, roughly fourth and fourth and four, fourth and five, somewhere in there. Yeah, no, no big, no uh, small schools, but you know our conference. Um, you know, interesting thing about golf is you don't get to play any defense. You just show up and yeah, you play. You know, you can't dictate what anybody else does. You're and, in control of your your own. Yeah, and Salem Salem's definitely the the favorite. I believe we have a timeout here. So we will take another quick break. Founded in 1970, Brownstown Electric Supply Company is proud to serve and provide material to our friends in the utility industry. We are equipped to take on the most demanding projects with an experienced staff located in Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, and Illinois. Brownstown Electric is family owned and operated with a family first work culture. If you're looking for a lasting career in a robust industry, give us a call today at 812-358-4555 or visit us online at brownstown.com slash careers. All right, we're back here. What, what would your call be? <laughs> I, 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 I would, I mean, I would probably be pretty, I'd probably be pretty safe here. Actually, I'd probably punt, let my you know, defense try to make a stand. Um, like, but what do I know? I'm not a, a head football like coach. I go for it, and I would be surprised if it wasn't a. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'll probably. The toss has been working. We've been talking about that. Uh, but so has the slant. So I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but but run the toss there. They barely get back maybe to the line of scrimmage or so. Um, I think Owen Wishmeyer there with the tackle. First name, I think, first time we've called his name. But I think he looked at the defensive points. This 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 week uh, that was sent to me, he's leading our defense points, um, leading us in yeah, I believe solo tackles. He's going to be leading tackler. Um, he's been flying around really well and and uh, reads where the ball's going well. Of course, the Braves take over on that fourth down on turnovers and come out and. Run a, run a pass there, just a little throwback almost. To, who was that? Was that Zyke? Zy 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 that's yeah. what I thought. Okay. Um, Lane Zyke, first time we called his name tonight. Re really nice catch and nice a really nice move, nice move yeah. to, to get some positive yards there, gain of a four or five. And that's a, you know, that's a route that you um, don't see a lot of from, from the Braves. Engel met at the line of scrimmage by number 55. And that is Noah Dalton. A good play there. Yeah, uh, you know, Braves throughout the years, you know what to expect, run, double handoffs, you know, jet sweeps on the outside, not known for our passing. I, I really like Coach May and the young quarterback, just some of those nice, easy throws, different wrinkles in our offense. Um, that makes teams have to prepare for us, you know. I think that's what you have to be able to do to to win and, you know, really advance in the postseason. You do, especially, like you said, to advance into the postseason, um, you, you got to be a little more creative. So, I mean, you get could, you, eventually you run into to teams that are just as big, just as fast, just as athletic as you. So what's the differentiator, but you know, um, to, to help yourself win that game. And, and it's advancing your offensive philosophy. Quarterback keeper here, nice run by Michael Shepard. Nice, nice hole there, but yeah, nice hole. Dave was talking about the line earlier. You know, can't say enough about them. I, you know, they don't get the coverage in the paper. They don't get the, the you know, they don't get the recognition, recognition no. that they, they deserve, and especially in a run-heavy offense like this. Um, great, great blocking there up front. Yeah, you go back to that threat to not being able to pass, you know, and teams really start stacking the box on you. And if, sooner or later, there's we got another timeout here on the field. It looks like timeout by yeah, the Braves. The um, but we'll, we'll stay on this one for a minute. Uh, but when you get you know eight nine guys in the box, sooner or later there's not enough blockers to to yeah. block everybody, and that makes things a lot more difficult. More hats in the box than there are to, to block, like you mentioned. And and on top of that, Brandon, just just. In football, in general, it takes um, 
you know, it takes all 11 guys to kind of do their thing for, for a, any given play to work. And I, I don't know what the percentages are, <laughs> but I guarantee you they're, they're probably not even 50% that all 11 guys are, are running their, um, doing their task to, to perfection. So that, that, that could be the, the one key that causes the play not to work. And, and when there's more hats in the box, like you mentioned, uh, you, everybody has to, has to be uh, to perfection for the play to work. And it just, it's, it's tough. All right, see what the Braves draw up after our time out here. Maybe a full start here. That would be my guess. Full start on the Braves, and the Braves are up 14, but kind of a little bit sloppy here in the past few possessions. Not possessions, but past few plays. Yeah. yeah. Called a timeout and then come out from a timeout and get a, a full start there. Yeah, that never makes the coach happy. Uh, I know that, you know, coaching on the basketball side, you know, you call a timeout, draw something up, and when you come out and it, you mess it up. That's never, never, never makes the coach happy. No. Zyke around the left end there. Gain of about nine or ten, roughly. Makes it manageable. Be third and third and about five. Or second and five. Second and five. Second and five. The timeout there, yeah. Got me confused too because I was right there. I was thinking. Well, yeah, and I already saw the two on the <laughs> down out there, so I. Nice. nice run again by Zyke. Good carry. Uh, looks like he just tripped over over T Myers' uh, foot while foot he there. was blocking. <laughs> and Coach May definitely probably sees see something there. It's consecutive runs to the left. I might, might have even been the exact same play um, or really similar. And yeah. both two two positive gains. Yep. Be nice to see the Braves punch it in again here. Double, Double handoff. And huge nice, hole. Huge, huge hole. hole. No one there. And Engel runs it in for the score. Sheffer, Sheffer the lead blocker the out there, but yeah. thankfully he didn't have to hit anybody. Um, you know, good good to see him out there. I definitely want to see him fresh. I know I was talking to, to Principal Sheffer today, um, and, you know, he's got a big golf tournament tomorrow up at Ball State, tomorrow and Sunday, so... He's got a busy weekend. Um, he does have a busy weekend. <laughs> we want to wish him luck uh, up there. Don't want to jinx. Don't want to pull off the jinx, but hope to see Pete go three for three here. And, does. and he does. So your Braves take a 21 to zero lead here early in the second quarter. Looks like we're up to 91. Got 91 people watching here. So. And talking about getting a little bit behind, I, I just recognized I was a little bit behind on quarter there. I still had it at quarter one, but that's because I noticed I had to had to scroll down to to get down to where I needed to. So, and I I know each team has called a timeout, so I'll get that up to up there. So both teams, of course, have two timeouts left. I'm glad you know how to operate it. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got a good teacher. Uh, um, Aaron Harrell, of course, usually um, here. Uh, but Bedford, uh, he also has, we also, AWH Media has B-Town Live and BNL Live. Um, BNL has, also has a home game tonight. So that's where he is. So, but once again, just please be, bear with us. We're, we're, we're doing our best. And we, of course, hopefully get better and better as, as we continue to do this. A little shorter kick here from oh, Pete. Short. We'll see if they let that. Oh. Oh, wow. You, you couldn't. Oh, no, he's throwing the flag now. Yeah. So it did, it did roll out. Oh, 
Dave, what do you think? Was that an intentional pooch kick or just a, I, I a miss so. there? I think so. He had the. Uh, I've noticed the right. Um, the the. I, I apologize. I don't even know what we'd call it, but the, but the guy on the furthest end has been staying back as a safety uh, guy during the the deep kicks, and that time he was he was flying down. So I think an intentional pooch kick kick to probably try to see if we could get down there and recover it as long as it stays in in bounds, but it, it did not. Close. Jameson McFarland, the Braves defense is immaculate. Uh, they outside of the letting letting Salem move the ball earlier. I would agree with you. Little little bit of old school football right there. Yeah. Just fullback run. Fullback run right up the middle. Fullback dive and just try to send two or three blockers on. Uh, <coughs> you know, double team, double team, maybe even a triple team in there. Which is something, of course, that's become more and more prevalent in the the NFL game. Um, used to be where if you push from behind, it was illegal. Now that's yeah. that's all legal. So yeah. you know you get down the end zone, those guys just quarterback sneak or hand off, and everybody's Everybody just push. pushing from behind. Hold you up and push. Yeah. yeah. You got a second down seven here for the Lions. Quarterback keeper. Let's see. It looked like a host of Braves there. Maybe Wishmeyer, Joe Roberts, Trent Lowry. For about a loss of one, I believe. Yep. Braves defense definitely up the middle. Really stellar, I think. I just uh, and I, I think looking back, you know, from from last year's team, that's one, one area of, of improvement. Not only, I mean, it, it, the size. We're just, you know, last year um, our two D tackles were not quite, we weren't quite as big up the middle. And I think those guys eat up blocks. And, and we mentioned Owen earlier, but it really is the key to allow your middle linebacker to flow free uh, to make to make those those tackles, uh, those guys eating up blocks. It's just another <laughs> thing where you talk about the big guys not getting a lot of credit, but but that's just how football works. And, and when you watch the NFL drafts and see the number of defensive linemen and offensive linemen outside of your quarterbacks, the, the money is up front uh, in the NFL. And that it's always been that way. And uh, the line of scrimmage continues to control the game. It's going to be close there. I think we might give it to him here. First down. I figure they might bring the chains out and measure, <laughs> but uh, looks like they're going to go ahead and give it to them. And a phenomenal officiating crew we have here. I'm fortunate enough to know a lot of these guys uh, because they also um, officiate basketball um, but I know Mike Wright who if you paid attention or followed along on the uh, live stream where the the Brownstown Lady Braves volleyball team played New Albany the other night he was he was on the call and you know he teaches teaches eighth grade math at the at the Brownstown middle school um, this is usually a part of he's a part of this crew he's usually the back judge um, I know DJ Hinkle um, is filling in for him but this crew I know has done a state finals many regionals and semi-state games so um some of the best i know they may look familiar because they were also at the the charlestown game we had them for that game as okay. well um you know and i i know that they watched went back and i think they watched the their game and you know these guys are always trying to learn trying and make to, themselves better that, and that's what you like to hear Catch! Wow, uh, out there on a ball was underthrown, but the corner overran the receiver. Receiver made a good stop and come back, and a gain of I don't know, maybe thir thirty, close twenty-five, thirty. Yeah, um, not to not to make any excuses, but just being a corner, you know, th those are the hardest ones. I mean, there's a reason that in the NFL, if you're gonna miss a pass, a lot of those are underthrown. It's receiver can see and. DB's kind of at a disadvantage. Yeah, rough, rough game for uh, 
Harper Garrison out there so far <laughs> uh, at the corner position. A couple of slants and, and then that. So. Of course, looking back, that very first turnover, I mean, he yeah, yeah, huge, he huge good. play there. Um, and once again, I, I'm not trying to make excuses because, but it's youth tough. and you're exactly right. Youth and learning, and yep. you know, being a corner, we, we were both there, corners and safeties. Yep. You're out there on an island. It's you know, you're especially as sophomores, you don't quite trust your athleticism yet or or whatever your strength, and and um, so you. Oh, there's a. Underneath route there. Oh, nice Ooh, tackle up there ended, by Garrison. But, uh, up ended there. But nice. But they had the big play they had earlier, too, just sneaking the fullback out and rolling out and getting a nice a nice, uh, a nice, nice play there by the fullback on a flat route. Yeah, that time the underneath was open. Earlier it was the, the uh, drag route from the backside. It was open and it, he missed, but made the right read there. Great gain. First down, first and ten. Oh, looks like maybe the ball came. No, they're calling him down. Based on the reaction, it looked like maybe the ball came loose, but uh, they're calling him down. And Give him a gain, gain of one, second nine. So again, uh, Salem threatening here, Brandon. We'll see if the Braves can... Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we might them again not, they did not earlier. necessarily luck earlier that we were able to get that deflection and and turn over. But yeah, this is very similar to that first drive, first series for them. Another pass play here. Oh, oh, lose. and there's a loss of big loss. Several. <laughs> <laughs> um, great play, Grant Kelly there. Um, really applying the pressure, is able to get his hand, I think, on the ball, slap it away there. Um, Salem very fortunate, you to know, back on the, yeah. to be able to pick that one back up. And I was just getting ready to say that very similar to that first drive, a you know, nice mix of passes in there, and they've had some success. And but uh, yeah, they tried to the roll out on the opposite side that time, which is opposite. The quarterback is left left-handed, so he's rolling out to his right, makes a tough throw to begin with, and then, like I said, the pressure was there. He loses the ball, or or maybe it was knocked out, and then trouble from there great great job by Owen Wishmeyer to slow the runner down there and then check team are there to, to finish it off so we got fourth and maybe 25 here not a not a real favorable situation no, here no uh, but definitely I would you know what do you got to lose here? Uh, I think you got to take a chance. Just heap, of, heap it up. Uh, if, if it's intercepted, it, you know they get it out to the twenty. But heap it up. See, you got your receiver uh, number eight's had a, a very good game. Braxton Dean. He is six three, guys, one eighty. So I was gonna say, talking to some of the boys earlier in the week, they talked about the a six three receiver in there. So yep, throw yeah, it just up, throw it up, let him try to go get, get it. it. And as you mentioned earlier, with the corners, I mean it's. It's tough being on the island, and everything's geared toward the offense anyway. You, you, it's you know if you don't, if there's certain rules that the corner has to obey, and and it's it's just a, it's tough. So I think you can you can throw it up and try your chances there. Looks like looks like they're going to try a deep field goal here. So oh wow. Ball's on the 31, so 41 plus 40, seven, 48, 48 yarder. yarder. Uh, you don't see this very often in high school high school football. No. And the it's boot is up. up. Just slightly oh, short. Just short. Gets, <laughs> go ahead. I was gonna say, I mean what do you uh, I mean if you got a kid who almost definitely almost gets it there. <laughs> really probably just he, he didn't trust his leg enough, really. It didn't look like I mean he maybe just got underneath it a little bit if he if he hits that with some confidence, I bet, it, I bet it goes through pretty easily. Yeah, definitely a weapon for Salem. I mean, if, I don't know. I, I know Brownstown, even with our great kicker, I'm pretty sure we're not lining up for a 48-yard field goal right now. I don't think so. Correction, 
Braves have a minute 40 here left to go in the second quarter. We'll see if they can punch it in here. Now, my, my guess, trying to figure out why, is that a, a, a touchback because it didn't go out of bounds? It stayed in bounds? Why, why the ball to 20? Uh, not real sure. I'm not familiar with that high school rule. Obviously, college and NFL, they get it from the kickoff location. A good run by Hutchison there. First down. It'll definitely be one I'll inquire about, though. I gotta yeah. figure out why. You wouldn't think that the. Oh. Ooh. Like a comebacker out there, maybe overthrown a little bit. I was gonna say, it looked like he had some space there, just. And I uh, was wor worried about the camera, but my quick glance there, it almost looked like we were in shotgun there. Is that a direct snap to to Sheffer out of shotgun? Well, we. We, we, yeah, we, we are out of right. shotgun. That's what I thought. I just straight drop back. Another screen, tight end screen here. We'll see. Oh, nice block by Lowry out there. And good tackle by number three for the Lions, Harley Shockey. Braves in the hurry up offense here, the two minute offense. First down. Direct snap here to that T Meyer or, or is it Pace? Chick T Meyer. Chick T Meyer. Hand off the gears around the end there. Go, go, go. Got some distance, go. still on his feet. Driven out of bounds, great run there. Ball on the 20 here with 36.4 to go. Gain of 29, I believe. Thirty six point four. I'd like to see the Braves get another score right here before half. Nice comfortable twenty eight lead. Twenty eight to zero lead going in, hopefully. To the left corner. Oh, Got nice it. Catch. Great catch. Nice catch by Hudson Fritz. Hudson Fritz, Fritz his second touchdown of the game. Wow. <laughs> just just what we've been talking about yeah. though. I, yeah. I hope you can see that. I know our camera here goes just right there to the left corner. Um but one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, little underthrown, it, DB doesn't see it. Hudson goes up and gets it, and yep. it's, it's, a, it's a tough play for the DB, but a great play by Hudson to, to go up, jump up and, and meet the pass. And Pete trying to stay perfect here. He couldn't ask for a better position, really, by the, by the corner. It's just finding yeah. the ball. And up and Nothing good. good. 28 to zero with, with 28.9 seconds left. We will take a quick timeout break. MyTech strives to make technology easy. We pride ourselves in being your technology partner. NITEC is an established networking infrastructure company located in Southern Indiana. As a premier choice for fiber optic cabling installation and network administration, NITEC is a staple in the community for technology-related needs. We take pride in providing the best customer experience as well as thoroughly completing highly satisfactory work. In our area, there is a great need for affordable information technology services, and we feel we can offer just that. Visit us today at NITEC.com. And we're back here after our the score by... The throw and catch by Micah Schaeffer and Hudson Fritz. Um, you know, just a lot of people always talk about, you know, great defenses, but a great, great offensive plays. Yep. Just, sometimes yep. there's nothing Some, the defense can do. Yep. Let's see if the Braves decide to kick it deep again or pooch kick. A little deeper. But in that same same 
vicinity there as, as the last yep. kick. Great coverage there by the Braves. Well, say I'm going to try any any trick plays here. I don't you think know. They we'll see. Just... It might be a good time for for a halfback pass or something. Just see if they can catch the Braves sleeping and, and get a little momentum here. And you know, make half. some make some adjustments at half. To but so far, it's just been a an uphill battle for them. They're going to take a knee. They're going to take a knee. Yeah. And, and it just real quick while we're finishing out the half, it's just. I mean, up front is where Brown Sun seems to be dominating this on both ends of the ball. Um, the running backs aren't being touched until they're 15 yards down the field or so, and, and it's just hard to compete when you're when you're getting beat at the line of scrimmage. That is true. Um, we will take a a quick break here at halftime as your your Brown Sun Central Braves lead the Salem Lions 28 to zero. Um, we'll be back and and have a an interview with Trent Shelton. Um, unfortunately, we got cut off at the court in Central game, so we honored to have him back on uh, for halftime. Acquired by Damon Bailey and Randy Hawkins in 2011, Resource Services is your one-stop shop for anything from janitorial to food service supplies. Resource Services specializes in K-12 education. We are the preferred vendor for the Indiana-approved shopping cooperative. We offer name brands with competitive pricing. Our staff is trained to help solve your issues and help save you money. We are located in Bedford, Indiana and service the entire state of Indiana, Kentucky, Southern Illinois, and parts of Tennessee. Give us a call today at 812-275-4790. Founded in 1970, Brownstown Electric Supply Company is proud to serve and provide material to our friends in the utility industry. We are equipped to take on the most demanding projects with an experienced staff located in Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, and Illinois. Brownstown Electric is family owned and operated with a family first work culture. If you're looking for a lasting career in a robust industry, give us a call today at 812-358-4555 or visit us online at brownstown.com careers. And we're back here at halftime uh, as the 56ers are getting announced. Of course, it's always nice. I think the first name I heard was Ryder Garrison, son of David Garrison. Fifth grader, right, David? Sixth. Sixth grader. Oh, I can't, just can't keep them all, keep them all together, yeah. keep them all in line. I struggle um, too. So. I do know Charlie's in the eighth grade. So, yeah, but uh, we are we are happy here to be joined at halftime um, by, by Trent Shelton. Uh, we cannot thank him enough for his sponsorship. Once again, we, we talk about how we are able to provide this for free, and it's because of sponsors like Trent um, and the rest of the ones that you see that are on the screen that we're able to present this to you live. Uh, I, I remember doing a, our basketball game last last uh, winter, Trent, and you were the first one, I believe, to come on board. Uh, we were happy to have you on board again. Um, just be you and just tell us about what you do and and uh, how, how people can come see you and all that good stuff. Yeah, no, uh, it's really great to be out here. Again, Trent Shelton, the Bob Pointer GM, uh, right next to, we told Bob, the, hopefully KFC never goes away because we always say Bob Pointer next to KFC. <laughs> That's how everybody finds us. Uh, so we are the one right next to uh, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. So. Even, even though, even though <laughs> Bob Pointer is a lot bigger. Yeah, than, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, it is bigger than K Kentucky Fried Chicken here, here in Seymour. But yes, uh, we, are, we are known for uh, right there next to Kentucky Fried Chicken. So can't thank Bob enough, JB. Hackman uh, is now taking over the reins, so he's done a great job for us. Uh, Clint Waskin is our general sales manager now. Uh, Billy Brown, uh, new car manager. We got some great finance guys. We got a great team. So if you guys are ever in, in the market for a new car, used car, uh, anything, come see me. We'll, we'll, we'll take good care of you. I, these guys standing on both of my sides. We got Clark Smith behind us as well. Uh, I've sold all these guys' vehicles. Um, they always sit prompt and dependable service after the sale. So any, anytime they need, uh, anytime Krista hits a deer, yep. uh, we, 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 get loader, we get loader cars for her. Uh, and it just, it's happened a couple times. So, uh, yes, come see me, Bob Pointer. We, we're more than happy to take care of you. But uh, great football game. We appreciate what you guys do. Uh, the other night, uh, Beth and I were at home, and we, uh, we, we watched uh, the volleyball game. Uh, so I like how we're expanding out to the football, to the volleyball, to the basketball boys and girls. But, yeah, uh, 
just because of this, we got Addie up at Ball State tonight. Uh, she's she was here last time. Uh, she's watching. Luke is up at Indianapolis at grad school. He's watching, and we got a bunch of people listening everywhere. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, being able to watch younger brother uh, when they're away at college. You know, that, that's what this is for. It's 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 to reach. I know some people are worried about first, like. You know, but it's it's not it's it's to reach out to to family, friends, grandparents. You know, who may not be able to come to the game, shut-ins. You know, just anybody to to get a chance to watch their their son, you know, or grandson or nephew. Just just a, another way for them to be able to to watch. Yeah, and I've, I've got think think several times that because we were, it was really new last year. Uh, just starting off, got to thank several times at the dealership. Uh, thank you for sponsoring, all that good stuff. So that's, that's what we kind of do. We want to give back. Uh, th this year, basketball, probably going to have a lot of sellouts, and uh, especially at uh, Brownstown. So tune in with these guys. These guys are doing a great job. So Aaron does a great job. Uh, Brandon, Dave, everybody that, uh, that it's a part of this thing. You know, looking at your screen right now, you've got tons, not tons, that you could always use more sponsors, but uh, just, just happy to be a part of it, happy to give back to the community. Um, several of these guys grew up in the community just like myself. Just it's, it's our way of giving back and trying to help out. Like you said, shut-ins and, and sell-outs and things like that. And then, you know, football is one of those sports that starts out as super hot. And then by the end of the season, is, we're all bundled up. So if you don't want to get out, uh, uh, you know, tune into these guys. They do a great job. You know, just, you know, we're watching a great, great teamwork out here. We've, we've really tried to focus on our, our offense and defensive line um, being the reason we've been successful here tonight. Um, you mentioned the team that you have a Bob Pointer. Why Bob Pointer is, you know, what do you say? Is I know it's in the top 20, correct, in the state. Yep. Uh, 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 number 13th in the state last month in used cars. So you've got 331, 336 uh, used car dealerships out there. We're number 13. So it is teamwork, and we're competitive, and, and we, we want to win. I mean, really, just at the, at the bottom line is we want to win at everything. And, and so does so does Brownstown, so does Seymour, so does everybody. So we really appreciate everybody's business coming in. Um, <clears throat> sales, service, body shop. I mean, we, uh, I, I got a friend of mine this morning or this evening at 4.30, uh, got him a, a loaner car. He, he got rear-ended up in Indianapolis. So it's just it, we, we, take, we take care of people. We take care of the people that take care of us. Um, I know my, my dad just raves about, you know, he, he doesn't, he's not a big part. He just runs. I know he runs, loves to run and get parts, but I have not heard one bad thing about him, about Bob Pointer. So no, he does it. He does a fantastic job. Uh, just, just like anybody up there. I mean, everybody knows the role. They help out. They chip, uh, they chip in. Um, we're walking on the, we're walking on a lot. We see a piece of paper. We're going to pick it up. You know, it's, it's just what's uh, instilled in us that uh, Bob and JB and Clint and Billy and all these guys have, uh, have, have taught us. And, you know, we, it's all about, um, Perception, you know, get the perception out there. You, you got a clean environment, clean work environment. Uh, everybody's happy. Um, I've been there eight years now, and it seems like two. Uh, I just love going to work. Uh, we don't really don't even call it work anymore. We just, uh, just just help out, try to help out as much as we can, and um, do the best we can with what we got. Uh, there for a while, obviously, inventory was low, and <clears throat> we had we we struggled for a little bit, but. Uh, every, it, Bob has never, Bob always said there's no peaks and valleys. You know, we have hills. No peaks, no valleys. We just go through the hills. We go through the little rough rough patches. But all in all, Bob's created a, a wonderful environment for everybody to work in, especially your father. And you talk about perception there, Trent. Uh, again, we can we can attest to that personally, as you mentioned, with the, with the deer. But but uh, there's got to be something that separates a team apart from, from everybody else. And, and, and one thing that I know our family uh, believes in is, is you guys – do bend over backwards to help your customers in any way uh, that you can and the customer service is fantastic so thank you for that no we we, we appreciate helping uh, beth usually gets frustrated sometimes when i'm on my phone it's uh, 10 o'clock at night well you know somebody's got to bring in a loaner car or and then whatever time you know I've, I've met people up there all the time we'll get them loaner cars or send a wrecker out just you know, anything we can to help um we're just like i said we love what we do um from from start to finish As for the football game here, I mean, they, I heard you say earlier that uh, your running backs aren't getting touched till you're 10, <laughs> 10 yards down the field. I mean, they're, they're doing a great job. And uh, we were sitting over there. And, uh, one of the penalties, I do believe, was on number 71. <laughs> uh, that would be the, the Drew Shelton. Um, so either he did not snap the ball or he snapped it too soon or something. So and, you know, I, I, I just sent, uh, you know, 
I hear a Reed May and starts <laughs> and Beth turns around me. She goes, Was that on him? Absolutely <laughs> it was. And he's a sophomore, so we're gonna be just fine. Yeah. Uh, just, he, we, we've all been yelled at before. Um, <clears throat> As coaches we, and players, we, we talked about that earlier. Just the the amount of sophomores and 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 uh, uh, you know on on the starting O and D, and just building from there. And and of course, like you said, Drew is one of those, and he's doing a, an absolutely fantastic job. I believe came in during the Charlestown game and and has really taken over since. Yeah, it was it was really really fun to see uh, uh, KBJ Keaton Bertram Jones comes over to uh, uh, Drew Shoemaker, uh, Coach Shoemaker, and say, hey, if you want me to continue, you know, performing on defense like I'm performing now, uh, Drew Shelton has to stay in there. And and Drew did a great job. I, I you know he's, he's my son, but he did a great job. I'll be the first to critique him and the first to praise him. Yeah. And yeah. he did a great job at Charleston. And I actually heard uh, one of a story where they said, well, uh, uh, Joe Sheffer was telling me he's like, well. Coach May, Drew stayed in there an awful lot. He goes, yeah, I didn't really know that until I watched <laughs> film. So some of the stuff well, does, does get by Coach May, but not in film. He, 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 he can say that, but I, I, do know, I did notice that. And that game was, uh, for those that, that weren't there, was, what was it, 90, almost 90 degrees? I mean, it was cramp, hot. Uh, second half between the two teams, there was, there was cramping every other play. So I did notice that after about the second or third possession, which Coach May normally uh, – or Brownstown I, yep. it normally rotates uh, each possession, but after that, he pretty much the, the guys who played both ways only played maybe defensively, and he brought in the the um, the other offensive lineman to come in and take and and really that's that's I think that's going to pay dividends going down the road, especially when you get to see more maybe next week uh, and, and into the tournament when 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 you're going to need depth uh, yep. to keep guys fresh both ways. So no, I, I agree see. with that. Yep. Uh, like you said, a lot of cramping went on, and then uh, Coach Main is after after the after the speech was uh, a lot of uh, younger guys grew up tonight, and and uh, you know that's Sheffer, that's that's Garrison, that's Drew, that's that's, that's you know Hutch, you know, Joe Roberts. I mean, uh, there's a lot of sophomores out there, and they really bought in uh, to the weight program off season. Uh, they Drew loves lifting weights uh, along with his buddies, and they. Football's a different breed. You guys know that. You guys were both been on the field and in the locker room. I mean, this you guys go to battle. And, and I was telling one of the guys at work today that to play football, you have to control yourself and do your job and just make sure that you don't worry about everybody else. Make sure those guys are going to do their job and that that hole's going to open up. And then everybody does their job. The school board's going to take care of itself, which it has so far. That little drive they put together right before half, that two-minute drill, Unbelievable. I mean, Mike, a good ball there. And uh, I think it was Fritz that went up and got yeah, it. Great and catch. Great catch. Great, great catch. Ball, great I mean, catch. Uh, Preston had a heck of a run on the on the opposite side there. I mean, it was a, it, it was just a whopper of a half. <laughs> uh, uh, make sure I'll, I'll say that. Whopper for the, the former mayor of Brownstown, Clark Smith, uh, former, <laughs> former, bas or former football coach here at Brownstown. You were talking about your team at Bob Pointer. Um, I know you used to, of course, be – be a, a, a principal here in our community and a former coach. How how does that transition? How, the, the whole coaching. How do you miss that? Um, I, I I do miss it. I do miss it. I, I coached all everybody's kids for so many years, and then Luke came up, and and that's when I switched positions. But uh, looking back, hindsight's twenty twenty. Luke got all his accolades by himself. Drew is going to get all his accolades by himself. Addison got all her accolades by herself. It's it's one of those where. You get the kids so far, and then you turn them over to the coaches, just like you, Brandon, and, and, and say, all right, they're yours. You know, we, we've got them so far. And, you know, my, my hat's off to my hats off to you guys that coach all the time, in and out. I mean, you guys don't get enough, uh, you guys don't get enough praise. Uh, teachers, tonight was a, a staff appreciation. Had a lot of jerseys. I mean, the, the we were over on Elm Street, and the, the crowd just erupted. It was just wonderful to see all the white jerseys and everybody standing up and, and, and all the Facebook posts where teachers were uh, posing with their students and, uh, Tanya Fee was over there a while ago, and she, even though she's uh, her and Jason are Seymour people, they're over there because of Sawyer Brown, Todd Brown's son, and uh, she was she was honored to get that, and just like just like you guys just said too, when, when you know your son's a, a sixth grader, it's like time just gets away from you, and uh, she's like, sorry, you can't, there's no way you can be a, you can be a freshman <laughs> now, freshman. so it, but you know it, it does, but team works everything, you guys know that in school, uh, in, in the business world, but uh, just. Blessed to be a Bob, part of Bob Pointer. I mean, eight years, like I said, it feels like two. We help out wherever we can. And, and looking back on it, I mean, a lot of my book of business are obviously friends, former coaches, former players, parents, students. I mean, those students I had back in the day, 
I mean, heck, they're coming up and buying cars and they got kids every all the time. It's like, wait a second, that makes me like 150 years old. So you guys, you yeah. guys can't be that old yet. Yeah, and I know we we failed to mention uh, teacher appreciation night when yeah. they when they announced yep. that. I, I am blessed and honored. Uh, Hunter Topi uh, chose me as his as his as his teacher. Um, you know, I had him in class last year. Um, phenomenal student. It's going to be, I think, a really good football player in the future for us, just a freshman. Um, unfortunately for me, I don't know if I've either just gotten that much bigger or those jerseys have shrunk. shrunk. Because <laughs> they, I, had I, shrunk. I, they had to shrunk. I, I, told, I told my girls, we, we have our, our conference tomorrow, and I always cook, my, my wife and I cook a spaghetti dinner for them before we, the night before conference, our golf conference. And I was trying it on, and I told her girls, like, I, I think this is like a corset. Like, I mean, it just, like, shrunk here. It was okay in the shoulders, but by golly, around my stomach area, it just shrunk and was, like, tight and cutting off my air supply. So, um, shout out to Hunter, though. Thank you for, for choosing me as, as your teacher appreciation teacher. Yep. Nope. Uh, they, they got a good second half here. Hopefully we uh, we get up and get a running clock, and then, like we did last week, we call it, call it a quick half. So, but uh, thank you guys for having me on. Like, again, appreciate everything you guys do for us. Uh, you know, trying to get our name out there, trying to get the advertising out there and all that good stuff. But uh, keep up the good work, and I appreciate Aaron. I appreciate you both, and uh, thanks again for having me. If you guys need anything, you know where I'm at. you got my cell phone, uh, Bob Pointer GM, right next to KFC. <laughs> no, thank you, Trent. Keep appreciate it. Thank you, Trent. Uh, we will be right back. We will take a, a quick break here before the start of the second half. Nitec strives to make technology easy. We pride ourselves in being your technology partner. Nitec is an established networking infrastructure company located in southern Indiana. As a premier choice for fiber optic cabling installation and network administration, Nitec is a staple in the community for technology related needs. We take pride in providing the best customer experience as well as thoroughly completing highly satisfactory work. In our area, there is a great need for affordable information technology services, and we feel we can offer just that. Visit us today at nitech.com. Finding the right insurance coverage can be a daunting task, but fear not, because here at Brown Family Insurance, we've got your back. With years of experience and a dedication to our community, we're your trusted local independent agency, including companies such as Erie Insurance, Western Reserve Group, and Progressive. From auto, home, business, and life, we're here to tailor the perfect insurance solution just for you. Because protecting what matters most is not just a job for us, it's our passion. Contact our staff today and let's secure your future together. All right, we're back here. Um, I hope we got still got a couple minutes left, but we'll try to recast some things there. Once again, thank you, Trent Shelton, for coming up. Um, you know, I can't say enough about Trent. Uh, buying a buying a truck from him, buying my my truck from him, was the easiest process that I've ever done. You know, making that big of a purchase, absolutely zero pressure. Um, I thought he was just upfront, honest with me, gave me the best deal I could ask for. Um, and that to me, that's all you can ask. You know, I, I hate going to dealerships or looking for cars and really feeling pressure and. But he was he somebody was on you like as that. soon as you pull in the parking lot. Yeah, hey, let's go here, let's go there. Um, yeah, I can't, I couldn't agree more. And and like I said, just the the customer service. Anytime you, you're in a pinch, whether it be you hit a deer or, or something go out on your vehicle, they are quick to react. Trent, I'm sure he, he's probably not the only one, but. Um, any of the salesmen or sales members will will bring a vehicle to you uh, if they need to 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 help you out, and they're they're quick to jump. So yeah, definitely partial to Trent though. Once again, thank oh, yeah. you for sponsoring us. First one of the first to jump on board. He sponsors all kinds of stuff. I know he's he sponsored our golf teams, our basketball teams. Um, Bob Pointer, same way. Uh, JB Hagman, you know, very gracious for Brownstown Athletics. Um, you know, I, I know I just had to fill out a form today. We put our boys and girls golf teams putting on a scramble uh, here uh, at the beginning of October, and they had me fill out a thing for a $1,000 cash donation if somebody hits a hole in one. Um, of course, I know the odds of that happening are really slim, but, you know, just even just to offer that is really, mm -hmm. really awesome. So. Wrapping up halftime here, and Braves will will get the ball if I remember correctly here to start the half, and we'll yeah, see what they do with it. 
Um, I, I think I got a heckler here, um, Amanda Allman. I would like to know what spaghetti you cooked. I would like to try it. Um, yeah, uh, I guess I, I, I just happen to know that lady. Uh, I definitely didn't cook it this time. I did bite all. Um, but thank you to my wife, Amanda, for, for feeding our girls golf team for tomorrow. Uh, but, yeah, the Braves get the, get the ball here to, uh, to start out the half. Really nice to see them drive down, put seven points on the board, uh, and get to a running clock. Um, you know, just, you know, running clock, that, that mercy rule. It's not to make people feel bad or anything like that. Um, it's actually kind of the opposite. Um, but it does make things go faster, and, and that way you guys don't have to hear us as, as long either. So, Yeah, well, I, I know he's not on chat, but just a quick uh, shout-out to Chris Lambring, also a former player, and um, has his oldest son is a sixth grader with, with my youngest and, uh, in 56 or so. He congratulated us on sounding good, so at least somebody th thinks we're doing a good <laughs> job, so we appreciate that. Yeah, Chris. another guy. I, I, I can't say enough about him. Um, and helping kids in youth sports. I know he has, you know, three young sons. Um, he's always helpful for my son and just, you know, that's what it's all about, though. I, I, I you got a flag on a play. Great run back here. Great hole, great run back. And the guess is initially, of course, that the, the call will go against the Braves, but we will see. like a block in the back here so that that return will come back negated by that penalty i didn't i didn't see it i mean i don't have the luxury of a replay here but <laughs> well i know might i might be next i know <laughs> i didn't i know i definitely didn't see it because i was trying to keep up with lane um on that uh, awesome run um just hated it of course it comes back because of a penalty uh, but no thank you amanda um i'm glad you think we're doing a a great job here. Uh, once again, if you have chats, like we, we love to try to, we might be a little bit slow getting back to it, but please chat. Tell us where you're from. Interact with us. Um, gives us something to do. Not like we don't have enough to do, but we're always up for a good challenge. Throw and catch there, Chick T. Meyer, I believe. Yeah, Chick caught it. I had, couldn't tell you who it was to. It was a, <laughs> it was a good ball regardless of who it was to, either a Chick or the tight end, Brandeman. But uh, Chick jumped up, snagged it, and, and got a first down there. Yeah, a little unusual there. Two receivers in a similar similar area there. Was enough, of course, to pick up the first down. Run here by Zyke on the left side, a good hole and a awkward. Uh, yeah, awkward looked like he kind of foot might have got stuck, kind of there. Look, yeah. I don't know. It was just him a, lunging forward, and the defender was coming in for the tackle. And a little, I mean, it's it's incidental, but helmet to helmet, it's always a, a scary. Yeah, for sure. And see Zyke coming up a little bit, a little bit gimpy there. Second one. Double well, handoff double here. Handoff to Engel. Great block there. Um, I believe it was 70, 76 70. there. It's uh, Isaac, Isaac Hutchison. Hutchison. Engel with a double handoff. He gets across the 45-yard line through 47. Gets enough yards. Another brace first down. You know, I want to also give a shout out. These these guys also don't get enough recognition, but the the, the football managers on the sideline, yeah. you know, I see them, you know, they make sure, of course, you see during game day getting keeping guys hydrated and, and you know, all those type of things. But getting practice ready, um, washing uniforms, cleaning water bottles, all those duties that – you know, unless you're a coach or around the around the program that you don't see, and they, you know, they don't get enough recognition. Yeah, it's good good to bring them up because the the other thing that, like you mentioned, the getting practice ready. Well, 
there's there's a lot that goes into the practice number one number two there are a lot of practices and, and times especially during uh the, the start of the season when when there's two a days and things like that and, and they are required to be there uh just as as much as the players so it takes a lot of time and effort Nice catch and spin move there by Hudson Fritz. Having a big Hudson, game. I was going to say the exact same thing. Hudson Fritz having a heck of a game. Um, I think that's catch number three there. Of course, two have been for touchdowns, but all of them have been big touchdowns game. or first downs. Yeah, big gains. And it's good to good to see the wide receiver getting getting involved a little bit. Some some games they they're out there to block and and they do that well. But it's good to see them getting some. And a great move. I mean, a short hitch route that he was able to fake and turn outside and make a short gain into a big play. Right. Oh, big hole there for Zyke. Gets out almost to the to the 15 here, but 16 looks like and first down. Good enough for a first down. I'm going to give a shout out real quick to my sister, Brittany, down in Evansville. Her and uh, my brother in law, Zach, uh, looks like are listening. And also giving us a compliment. So, hi, Brittany. There's, there's two people. <laughs> so, let's see, direct snap to Chick Tmeyer, and he is dragging people across the. <laughs> That's a yeah. hard, good, hard run by Chick. Hard fought touchdown there. Yeah. Uh, definitely earned that. So, touchdown, Braves. Brittany, I'd like to hear how things are in Evansville. Um, of course, I spent six years of my life down there. Um, miss it. Got a lot of great friends down there. We were actually able to, to take a, a weekend vacation down there. Um, right before school started or first week of school or so. Um, definitely a lot of things changed, but love that area down there. So, yeah. She says, says she doesn't have – oh, peak. Oh. Peak maybe got a little – didn't get under that one enough. Slid to the to the left there and and no good. So, 34 to zero, Braves. Well, I am glad that – I know I'm glad that I did not put on – the jinx that time. Yeah. Um, didn't mention anything about his being, being perfect from on, on PATs, but uh, glad hate, that wasn't my fault. I hate that when you're watching a, a basketball game or something and, and the announcers bring that up. He's, you know, he's 12 for 12 on the night and <laughs> never fails. Never fails. So, um, Brandon Ritter, thank you for checking in, said that he didn't get the stream until halftime. Looking good. Um, you know, Brandon, I know, I know former player as well. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to comment. Let us know anything. We take all the pointers we can get. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Trying to. I know last week there was some um, suggestions about zooming in. It looks like we're, we're zoomed in a little bit more, but uh, if, if it needs to be better, let us know. Yeah, we're going to. Yeah, uh, we did. I know we zoomed in, and hopefully it'll be all right. We, just, we also don't want to lose too much of the field, but. You know, we're going to do everything we can to to make this the absolute best live stream that we can. So um, any suggestions, always helpful. Another well-placed kick there. Yeah. Uh, definitely needs, looks like a strategy for the Braves there. That's three times, I believe, in a row. So... Good coverage once again, a short gain after the kick. So, but still a good field, field position here for the Lions. First chance to see the Lions in the second half, see if they made any adjustments offensively. Nice job by Wishmeyer there coming through and just flying untouched, around. Untouched, just flying just around. Flying around. And pursuing the football. Can't tell if we have a penalty here or didn't see the flag, but they're having some kind of a discussion. I um, just want to give a huge shout-out uh, to 
to Mindy Stahl, uh, along with Peggy, Nana Heyman. Um, you know, Nana going through her, her chemo and all her therapy there up at IU Health uh, in Indy. Uh, prayers your way. Want to wish you nothing but a speedy recovery. Um, if we know that if anybody can beat this, you can. Um, so glad you're being able to tune in once again. That, that's the importance of being able to do this. We love being able to do this, provide this service. Um, but once again, we can't do it without sponsors. We, we can't thank our sponsors enough. Um, if you do want to sponsor, please, please reach out to myself, David, Aaron, um, the school. They'll be able to get you in touch um, to continue to do to do this. This is something we, you know, we're we are definitely not, you know, making money, getting rich on anything like that. It's just a service that we want to be able to provide um, and showcase our athletes. Also, I know my my mom and my my grandma Birdie. Uh, they're both up in Wisconsin uh, watching. So just another opportunity to two people that would normally be at the game um, watching that they are up at a an army reunion for my grandpa um, up there that they do every year. So they're watching from up there. That's neat. Here's that slant route. We hadn't seen it seen in a while. while. I, the, I'm really surprised that coming in here on the side closest to us here. And I mean, I think that's four times in, in my recollection as they ran it, three completions yeah. with, you know, the one broken up by mm. Engel. But I just would like to, you know, I, I, I would like to see the Lions keep keep doing that. I think, yeah. one, it's going to help help them, but it's also going to help help us defensively. Right. Um, but it's something they've, they've had some and success watching, with. Watching film last week, it was open for, for peaking the, the – the receiver just just dropped the ball a few times, but he had had room if he catches it to to um, make a big gain. But uh, something the Braves are definitely going to have to work on before <laughs> before Seymour. They will they will not be afraid to throw the ball around. Outside toss there again. Um, Braves had a little bit more success stopping that than they did earlier in the game. Brings up another fourth down. This is one I'm going to swallow my pride, and I'm going to go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right at midfield. Yeah. You, nothing to lose here. Yep. Uh, Braves haven't punted once, so it, it seems to not matter whether they have to go 99 yards or 50. It's, it's, uh, it's not about field position now. It's about trying to get some points on the board. And we got a timeout here by the Lions. Fourth and three, they want to make sure that they, they get the get play. The right call yep. mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I wouldn't go away from that slant. Yeah, I, I think that would be a, a perfect call here. I'm going to guess that's Coach May telling the guys in the huddle the exact same thing to be ready for that. But Tighten your tighten your coverage up and take that inside away. Make them make the quarterback have to make the perfect pass on the fade route. But yep. the corners have not... Yeah, that's make been completed now on both sides, so neither corner really is is, is taking that away. Yeah, make them throw that that, le that lower percentage throw. I mean that yep. a fade route. A lot of things have to go perfect for that to be completed. Right. Um, slant route, you know, just short throw, just a high success rate. So. Yep. Yeah, of course, what David's talking about: tighten your coverage. You know, bring your corners up a little bit tighter pressure. Big. Tried to sneak the fullback out again, or, or I believe that is the fullback, fullback number there. four, but uh, Chick Tiemeyer there for the. For a little, su the, little surprise. That was a that was a good five seven step, step drop there. Yeah, um, fake toss off fake toss. Yeah, I'm trying to get, but allowed us to get a little bit of pressure. I think it hurried our throw and a good coverage downfield as well. All right, the Braves once again take over on downs. Good run there by Gregory and great blocking. Yeah, again I was going to say, it, looked, it just looked like 15. a wall of, yeah. I mean, it looked like our our five interior linemen just absolutely just had a, had almost a just a V, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, just like the, the Mighty Ducks flying V there and hide behind, just there was just nobody follow. that touched him.
The outside run here. Oh, yeah. Good blocking. Oh, and he is, he is going gone. Score. Gregory Hutchinson scores from 34 yards out. I think one lion tried to make a diving one-handed tackle, <laughs> but not, not going to be enough uh, for Gregory. Not to bring that kid runner, down, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you're going to know too many tackles, one-handed tackles are going to take it down any of our backs. I Probably mean, not, but definitely, definitely not him. Definitely not that one. Let's hope Peak has a little bit more success here on this kick. And he does. Looks good, and it is good. Bringing the score to 41 to 0 with 6.06 here to play in the third quarter. Trying to catch up on some scores here, Brandon, but I don't want to look ahead too much, but. <laughs> Might be safe to do so now, but it looked like last I looked, North North Harrison was up seven to nothing on on Charlestown. Uh, still shows second quarter, so we'll see. No, we got another shout out here. Uh, thanks to Gary Baker, also a I believe a, a Bob Pointer employee, um, thanking us for doing a great job. So once again, we appreciate that. Um, once again, but any any ideas, suggestions. Uh, to, to try to make this the best that we can, we'll, we'll take it. If that means me or Dave just saying, hey, we need somebody else to do this, we, we're okay with that too. But um, something definitely we enjoy doing. Yep. As I said, uh, Court and Wake, new perspective, a different perspective on, on the game uh, that probably my son welcomes. <laughs> <laughs> just, I, I mean, I... You know, I can't thank you enough. I think that, of course, it's, uh, you know, definitely tough. Uh, you know, totally different role from you, stepping out of just being dad and, and fan and coming up here to, to be in a, you know, doing this, definitely not an easy easy job. So yeah. can't thank you enough. Well, I appreciate thanks. it. Love your knowledge. I mean, just your knowledge of football is, is second to none. There's, I don't think too many people know as much about the game of football as you do. I well, appreciate um, it. I spend probably too much time watching it uh, at all levels, but. It definitely helps make my two, job easier. Two kids involved there. <laughs> there, sorry, I get rid of the music there. I had it. Looks like the Braves have, have subbed in here some of the some of the JV players here to get some experience, which is is good. I know they have a game coming up Monday as well against, uh, probably against Salem. So getting to see a little bit of Salem's offense before. Her. Yeah, and that was something I I know I, I was going through the the rundown, you know, of of uh, our our fall sports, but the the JV football team had a really nice week. Two wins, you know, one against Charlestown, I think it was 28 to zero, um, and another against Floyd Central. So, um, and I, I believe the score was like 42 to 12 or something, but don't quote me, 40 to 12, I think. Um, to, to, those were, what, I think their first two games, they're two and oh. That first game, game, first week against Corden, I think, for them got canceled because of the heat. Who, who, for Brownstown? For the JV team. Or JV team, yeah. Uh, yeah, that game was canceled for the heat. Um, and then they came back and played Charlestown, which uh, that, that game Friday night was delayed to Saturday. And then they, they played Monday. And then they had a, a big win against uh, Floyd Central this past Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, nice a pass broken up. But slant again and, and broken up there by uh, Jackson Johnson, it looks like. And the Lions are going to punt for the first time tonight. Uh, Johnson deep here. We'll see. If the punt, no, this is the second time tonight. I, yeah, I made first, a mistake. Yeah. First hey, one was a little rough. The punt was a little short and didn't get a, a return, but I think that is the only time. One or two. Get, 
that is the second punt. Yeah, they, they had a it was a, a low kick that got a good roll, and I think we had a hot call, but good good job there by you said Jack Johnson, right? Yeah, Jackson Johnson. Um, yeah. Decision just to fall on it. You know, it's real easy sometimes to think, oh, he should just pick that up, but. Being a guy who's been back there before, it's not it's not that easy. Not and, that easy. And no. the last thing you want to happen is the ball to hit you and and muff it or muff it, you know, hit it and then they recover. So good and decision it, there by the fall. As a punt returner, it's a little different from from kickoff return because you you, you need to have a little calmer demeanor uh, because if you do muff it, you don't have quite as much time. But uh, so you need to. And I, I say it sounds like you'd you'd want to be in a more of a hurry, but you need to be calm and be sure. Once you go after the ball, you're going to be on it. And uh, looks like a nice carry. Who's that by? I, I did not see. I'm going to start paying a little, little more, a little closer attention to the game here. But uh, yeah, Braves second and seven, second and eight. Second and eight, second and seven. Once again, Indiana high school football, once it gets above 35 to zero, it is a running clock. Um, we, of course, have reached that that time. And even if it does happen to get that back below 35, it, it, it continues to run. Just to touch base on Indiana football a, a little bit more. Uh, unique opportunity for Ben Davis High School tonight, uh, able to host IMG Academy, um, nationally ranked program down in Bradenton, Florida. Um, and really just a sports, I mean, it, I don't want to say just as, as they um, they take their <coughs> schooling uh, serious as well, but it, it, it is also a sports academy uh, prepping players for for the next level. So it's, it's a, I would imagine, neat and an exciting atmosphere at, at Ben Davis tonight. For to sure. I mean, I know IMG Academy, great, great basketball program as well. Um, and just happen to know that uh, Brownstown's quarterback, Micah Sheffer, has actually went to IMG Academy for golf and played in a golf tournament down there. Um, so a nice little connection there as well. Yeah. I think the Braves will probably have to get off one more play here, of course, to, before the quarter is over. Brandeman back here, Trevor Brandeman at quarterback, hands off to 26, which is a uh, great run, which is Landon, Landon Alt. Alt. First time we've been able to say his to name, say I know. Name. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you're talking about the JV guys. Great to see these guys get in um, and get some experience at the varsity, at the varsity level. I know uh, I was fortunate enough to to be on really good teams and get, get those varsity minutes. Um, and hopefully, you know, these guys will be able to, by the end of the season, get a varsity letter. And, you know, that's that's a just a great accomplishment for them. Really, you know, just that hard work, that time. They, they yeah. be on the scout team and get their butt kicked day in, day out. They're um, out there every, every day, too. So, yeah, it's good to get that opportunity. So we'll take a quick break here. End of the, end of the fourth or end of the third quarter, Braves Lee 41 to 0. Acquired by Damon Bailey and Randy Hawkins in 2011, Resource Services is your one-stop shop for anything from janitorial to food service supplies. Resource Services specializes in K-12 education. We are the preferred vendor for the Indiana-approved shopping cooperative. We offer name brands with competitive pricing. Our staff is trained to help solve your issues and help save you money. We are located in Bedford, Indiana and service the entire state of Indiana, Kentucky, Southern Illinois, and parts of Tennessee. Give us a call today at 812-275-4790. All right, we're back here to, to begin the fourth quarter. Well, Dave, we talked a little bit about you and, you know, being a different task for your, you know, being a dad and being up here and, and calling your son's games instead of just being able to watch them. Um, as quarterback keeper there. Another nice hole there for Brock Dean of the JV line. It looks like Salem's have sub sub some players in too. So these teams will will meet Monday and for 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 five quarters essentially. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, all right, well, I'll get back to you in a second. But <coughs> that's a, you funny because we say the same thing about basketball games. You know, the JV plays four games before the varsity, and if it does happen to be uh, you know a kind of a a blowout of a game. Uh, you, we always laugh that you get to see 
another quarter or another five or six minutes of JV action that you've already yep. watched for four quarters. Yeah. So um, <laughs> just, but it's but once again, it's great opportunity for these for these young guys on both teams to to get some varsity experience. Um, Something that no matter what, how much time you spend in practice, I mean, it's not the same as, as being under the Friday night lights on, right. on a Friday night in, in, in the fall. So, That's but right. back to back to you, I just kind of wanted to see how Krista, uh, once again, I would say, Krista, thank you for, for sponsoring. I know Hoosier Christian Village, uh, been able to get that connection. Um, they have jumped on board with us as well. Can't thank them enough. But um, she missed she a miss, oh, botch snap there. Yeah, uh, I think the snap may have been okay, but the <coughs> just the snap was fine. He handled that fine, but when he went to turn to hand it off, it looked like maybe fumbled fumbled it then. Um, so. But what her feelings with you not being right uh, near? She, she, I mean, she appreciates the. I mean, she, she's <laughs> thankful we're able to do this, but I will say she does appreciate appreciate me at, sitting beside her near the uh, at the at the away games, just so that if she does have a question. Um, she can ask, and, and I'll try to sound like I know what I'm talking about, whether I do it or don't. But um, it's it, yeah, helps helps her to to kind of feel a little bit more comfortable in in knowing what's going on. And sometimes it's not so much that, but just uh, hey, is he is he you know if he comes up limping a little bit, is he hurt or is he not? And you're not out there going through it necessarily, but having gone through it, you can you can recognize some similar things that you you felt as as a player as well. So you have a general idea on on if it's serious or not. So I think sometimes that helps too. Um, was that Dean on the carry there? Laying it all Laying again. It all another again. another nice run for oh, all. Another botch uh, snap here. He look again on the transition, almost to the transition to the handoff. It yeah. looked like he lost it there. So mm -hmm. this is why you do this: is give them experience. Yeah. You're learn; they're going to learn and and be able to time things up. This is a little bit of extra practice for them, and yep, a little bigger crowd too than. Although they they got some experience last weekend as well at, at Eastern, so they're they're getting some some experience, and and I think the Corden week as well. So. Double handoff here. Looks like Trey Sweeney with the carry. Oh, He's nice. Break Breaks a couple tackles. Here. Breakthrough yeah. and score. Sorry, once again, we just missed the real the, the corner of that end zone, but he he goes, breaks a couple tackles there and gets in um, to give the Rays a 47-0 to zero lead. Mm -hmm. Good run there by Sweeney. Looks like the the Braves are going to try a are going to put their freshman kicker out there too. Number twenty four. You'll have to help me with the name. Romo Gonzalez. R Romel Gonzalez. Romel Gonzalez. Yep. So uh, that's good to see. It is. It's oh no. <laughs> right you know, just crossbow. just love the excitement <laughs> on the sideline. Um, you know, cheering on their teammate right there. These the upperclassmen, your varsity players. Definitely want to see him, but there, once that was off the goalpost, you know, just. Uh. <laughs> and I believe just for Mel Gonzalez, I teacher appreciation. I believe that I know he gave his jersey to my next door neighbor there uh, at school, Susan Lawson. Um, she had him or he had her for, for language arts last year. So. Okay. I think Preston gave his to Miss Roar over at LC, um, so she she's wearing his jersey tonight. And it's just a neat. I don't is it. I don't know when it started. I know we didn't do it, but uh, no, I some think it's just something here that started really something within the last. I want to say four or five years. So, um, and I don't know exactly how it works. I don't know sometimes I, if they rotate players who gives them each year. Um, I'm not not for sure on that, but. Just a really neat thing that Coach May and his football program and the, the boys do. Uh, you know, as a teacher, it does mean a lot. You know, some some people say, oh, they're just giving you their jersey. It's got, uh, I, I think it's more than that. I think they do put a lot of thought into it. Or at least some of them definitely put thought into it. Uh, really nice gesture to, 
to honor some of their favorite teachers. I know something else they do um, is they'll go during weight class sometimes and go and read to the kids at, at the different elementary schools or I think Preston one time with, with some of his uh, teammates were playing airplanes and just different things just to interact with the young kids and yeah I'm football sure I think they call that football Fridays that actually um, where they go visit nice run back nice here by the Lions here, oh yeah. now he's going in the wrong direction yeah. now oh he's oh still boy up. he eluded several yeah it's a good run back good, good little run back yeah um, but I think they call that football Fridays or, or something like that where boys go over and just interact and I, we were talking about the cheerleaders earlier and being role models but these guys, it's, it's so hard to instill and, and get your the boys, the girls to understand that there's always somebody watching. There's yeah. somebody mm -hmm. who wants to be like you or be you um, in the future. So Right. And it, it, you're always a role model wherever wherever you are. And I know uh, no one knows that any, any better than Jack Venner at, for the basketball program. You just see lines of kids walking up wanting autographs and things like that. And, and, um, and when you're out out and about just recognizing that there's always eyes especially in a small community there's always eyes on you um as as an athlete especially a big time athlete like he is um just something else to to keep in mind oh yeah i i will never forget a couple different moments this for that you know me growing up it was in 1994 i know i'm showing my age a little bit but nine years old i think or actually eight years old watching the the braves win the boys basketball team win a sectional for the first time in, in a long time. And, you know, Jeremy Foster, Michael Davidson, Josh Brewer, all those guys who are part of that, Brian Nuss, all those guys who are part of that, that team. Yep. Um, you know, I idolized growing guys up. Guys that were we my, look up to. Yeah, yeah, guys that I idolized, you know, that were around my brother's age. And then I'll never forget, uh, I actually still have a hat that they signed for me. I, you know, just those type of things. Yep. Uh, I remember Colin DeHart and Trey DeHart calling up, coming up to me during basketball and, you know, and Clay Brown, who it's awesome to see him on the sidelines now and, of course, had great success. But I remember holding him up on my shoulders. We got yeah. pictures of, you know, <laughs> just, you know, uh, it's just amazing the memories that you create Friday night football. It doesn't matter what sport you play. But, right. you know, there's always somebody who's going to look up to you and want to be want to be like you someday. Mm -hmm. So I will say running clock definitely definitely makes things go fast. Yeah. Down to almost five yeah. minutes here in the, in the fourth quarter. See, the Lions are at a third and three here, or fourth and three. They haven't moved the. Yep, fourth, fourth and three. Sure, they'll go for it and try to see if they can keep the, keep the chains moving and maybe put together a score here, to round out the game. But. Definitely like to see the Braves get a get a stop get a here. Um, hopefully, you know, be able to preserve a shutout. I know, you know they had a shutout last week and. Keep that defensive average down, and <laughs> yeah, it's it's a game that you comfortably win. But looking looking back, maybe over critiquing, maybe. But for me, and I, I'm sure Coach May will be the same way. It's there's still some some things definitely you can coach to and clean up tomorrow morning on film and and try to improve on getting uh, going forward. Um, you know, one thing specifically, I know two weeks in a row, really we've been burnt on on slants and it didn't come to fruition against against eastern but uh, because uh, the receiver had a rough night but uh, tonight they've they've caught a few now again the, the the dbs have been right there to make the tackle when when they when they uh, have caught it but you'd like to see a little tighter coverage or at least i would oh yeah definitely um they did end up giving given i know it was really close there they gave the lines the first down Dalton Brazel with a the tackle there. Nice to hear his name as well. I know he's a kid who, who loves his football. Yeah, we got to play with his dad. Uh, Dean. Should we say years ago or <laughs> are we not that old yet? I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's something also just it's hard to imagine that you, you guys that have sons that are out here playing on on Friday nights. You got guys that I play with, and some older, a few years older than us, with uh, Clay Fritz and 
and which his sons had a heck of a game tonight, uh, Hudson. But uh, Seth Ike, Lane playing, and Jesse Hudson, Isaac yeah, Hudson. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I'm missing some too. Oh, but, yeah, uh, but it's just, it is. It's just, I don't know. And I think that's what makes our community special. You know, I don't know, something about Brownstown guys. Josh McCrary, I know uh, Aiden's out here. So, yeah, you can name of several, I'm sure. But. <laughs> Ball loose. Looks like, looks like the Braves are. Yeah, they have the ball. Yeah, so. recovery there by the Braves. I couldn't tell. I could not tell who who uh, yeah, recovered. The, it was a yeah, I couldn't either. A pile there, but I I know the I know the varsity, the 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 number one varsity defense is is excited right now because help preserve hopefully preserve their shutout there with, yeah. with two minutes to go <laughs> um salem was making a little bit of a drive and <laughs> nothing not a worse feeling for them and you know you have a great game and then the jv team comes in and gives up a score late yeah. you know it, but i imagine the braves be really conservative here with the minute 40 to go yeah, Brandman keeping here with a nice run. Very nice run. Yeah, and, and I mean, like I said, the, the Braves had a, a a a great win against uh, Floyd Central Saturday. So that win and how they're looking tonight and how they looked last week against Pekin. Uh, Pekin did not sub in, by the way, and the Braves uh, JV team for the last quarter was able to kind of. Well, two quarters, I guess, uh, was able to keep them scoreless and actually got a, got a touchdown of their own. Um, so that was good to see. But it looks like the future is bright for Brownstown for the next few years. And the Braves decided to take a knee there. They were they are going to run out the clock. They yeah. will have to take one more snap here, I believe. I would expect the same result, another knee, so. Yep. And the Braves are going to come out of here with a 47-0 victory against Salem Lions and look to, uh, look to um, next week against North Harrison, who last week we saw was up on Charlestown. Uh, so both teams, if, if North Harrison holds on, would come in here 4-0 in the conference and, and looking to go ahead and take command over that the conference there with a, with a one-game lead. Yeah. Um, awesome to see the Braves come out of here with, a, with a, a victory. Hopefully, of course, always, you know, never want to see any, any injuries. But, yeah, big matchup next week with, with the Cougars and North Harrison. And looks like most likely it'll be uh, – have a lot of uh, implications for for who wins the MSC title, especially yeah. outright. Yeah, and and even if they uh, even if they do happen to take a take a loss tonight, I mean the, the game looks like it's it's close, and our game with Charlestown was close as well. So it's it's a game we're going to have to come out and be ready to match their physicality because they will be physical. Uh, that's just always North Harrison's brand, and uh, they'll run right at us. We'll have to match their physicality and and see what happens. Well, let us take a quick break and we'll come back and with our final thoughts and select our, our BASCO player of the game. Founded in 1970, Brownstown Electric Supply Company is proud to serve and provide material to our friends in the utility industry. We are equipped to take on the most demanding projects with an experienced staff located in Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, and Illinois. Brownstown Electric is family owned and operated with a family first work culture. If you're looking for a lasting career in a robust industry, give us a call today at 812-358-4555 or visit us online at brownstown.com slash careers. Nitec strives to make technology easy. We pride ourselves in being your technology partner. Nitec is an established networking infrastructure company located in Southern Indiana. As a premier choice for fiber optic cabling installation and network administration, 
NITEC is a staple in the community for technology-related needs. We take pride in providing the best customer experience as well as thoroughly completing highly satisfactory work. In our area, there is a great need for affordable information technology services, and we feel we can offer just that. Visit us today at nitech.com. All right, welcome back here to, to Blevins Memorial Stadium. Once again, your Braves win 47-0. to zero. Um, We'll go over here, uh, another tradition for the Braves. You know, Coach May huddles everybody up, all the fans uh, in the stands. And we'll, try to, we'll try to wrap this up fairly quickly, uh, you know, so Dave can get down there and, and enjoy some time with his son after a great victory. Uh, once again, we can't thank our sponsors enough. Um, also, please don't forget to, to subscribe, get updates. Anytime Brownstown or B-Town Live goes live, um, you'll get those. Um, but, you know, Brownstown Electric Supply Company, Besco, gives out a, a, a player of the game. Um, and I will let Dave go ahead and introduce, introduce our player of the game. Yeah, I think we, we uh, agreed on Hudson Fritz. Um, it's, again, it's, it's Brownstown offense. They don't typically throw the ball much and didn't necessarily tonight, but the times they did throw – of course, uh, Micah made some good throws, but Hudson went up and fought for the ball down here in the end zone, made a heck of a catch, and uh, and and got himself open on a few other routes uh, when Micah was kind of scrambling around a little bit to uh, to have a somebody to to throw to. So, uh, congratulations to Hudson Fritz on a on a fantastic night tonight. Yeah, well deserved. Two touchdowns. I think three end up. With, I, we don't we don't keep stats, but I think with two two touchdowns two on touchdowns. three catches. Yeah. You know, great move on a short comeback route and get to the outside. So, great game. Um, great game by the Braves. Uh, once again, Dave said, talked about some little things to work on. Um, definitely some little things you're always critiquing to get better. Um, if you are happy or stagnant where you are, I mean, it's going to jump up and bite you and you're going to get beat. Oh, yeah. so, um, can't be complacent. No, can't be complacent. Once, tonight, once again, thank you for tuning in. Um, please reach out if you want to want to want to sponsor, want to help out. Um, but once again, we can't thank our sponsors enough. So, uh, with that being said, we'll, yeah, we'll wish, wish you a good night. So, uh, a good night and a safe weekend. And we'll be on the air again next, next week. week. North Harrison, big game.